I've done it before. It's impossible. You can't do it. And we just kept coming back, well, why can't we do it? Just because no one's done it before, it doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means no one's tried. No one's tried. No one's tried. Hi, I'm Greg. I'm the Mine Operations Manager here at Kathleen Valley. Hi, I'm Holly and I'm the Underground Manager at Liontown. Hi, I'm Peter. I'm the Open Pet Manager for Liontown. I'm Matt. I'm the Mine Planning Superintendent for the Underground here at Kathleen Valley. So what we've got here at Kathleen Valley is, yep, this is the first underground large-scale lithium mine. There's two ore bodies that we've got in the one mine. Uh, we, do, we do have a, a flat, dipping, shallow ore body. The, the main ore body that we're targeting, the Mount Man ore body, it's perfect for underground. It's long strike, it's good thickness, it's a vertical ore body. In 2021, during the feasibility study, um, there was a large open pit that um, took out part of the Jones Creek and also the Mountain Man um, area. And then since then, we've gone through a number of designs that have then reduced the footprint of the open pit. Originally, the pit design went through the western, um, came from a western ramp that went through the granite ant section. So, yeah, modified the pit design in this area here. Um, with the granite ants being in here because of the significance of um, the granite ants to draw. Yeah, you've got to um, be sustainable and environmentally conscious, um, not just obviously the impact on the environment, but also the impact on key heritage sites and um, respect the people that um, obviously have ties to the land and that, and minimising and taking into consideration the impacts as well. So this is all coming out from the open pit operation. Um, this will be going to the ROM. So um, we're now in the main thick um, ore body section of the open pit. Roughly about 70 metres below surface from when we started in January um, 2023. Previously, when we we're mining the waste, you obviously get that really dark grey colour um, of the gabbro. Um, so you can really tell when you are in the thick ore body. And as you can see here, you've got a white floor and a nice white wall as well that shows the, the top and the depth of the ore body. The plan of the uh, open pit is to finish um, around December 25, January 26. And then we've probably got another 40 or 50 metres to go before we're at full depth of the open pit for um, Kathleen's Corner. You know, there's an old saying, you know, everyone wants to be the first to be second, but occasionally someone's got to be the one that takes that step and does, does get in there first, and we've shown it can be done. And yeah, we are seeing that. And, it's quite interesting seeing a lot of other companies now putting out feasibility studies and they're pretty much copying what we're doing here. So we're now entering the Mount Man pit. Uh, so from the base of the Mount Man pit, this is where we commenced the underground operation. We've got six portals here. So we've got three portals to access the northwest ore body and another three to access the Mount Man ore body. LV entering Mount Man south. reached the end of the road, <laughs> so to speak, Where, what, what's going on here? This ore body, as it gets deeper, it gets wider. So where we are here, we're at about um, 10 to 14 metres thickness of the ore body. By the time we get to depth where the, the bulk stoping happenings, we're down to 80 metres wide on this ore body. It, this is huge and that's why this is perfect for, for an underground operation. So the stoping process will involve bringing in a different drill rig. That'll drill a much larger diameter hole and use a slightly different explosive and we'll be able to time that initiation, time that explosive delivery um, so that we can get just the ore body and leave all of the waste rock behind. From where we see this heading now, from us mining it, getting it onto the ROM pad and to, to clean concentrate, um, yeah, you're talking a matter of days. So the actual delivery from the mine face to concentrate in the shed 
it, it's a very quick turnaround process. The oil hygiene's important uh, here for us because from what we've seen with other lithium operations, the cleaner you can get it, the better you can get it through the process plant. The better recoveries you get, the better concentrate grades you can get. So for us, keeping it clean, we've worked with our geology team on how we can improve those processes. It's all about getting good definition of the ore. Been doing diamond drilling campaigns to make sure that we know where it's going to be. When you're talking a mine life of 20 plus years, Technology is going to change, there'll be improvements and we need to make sure we're at the front of that and we're um, making sure that we're doing this as best as we can. One of our biggest challenges, because of the size of this ore body, we're going to be running a lot of trucks down here, that's going to be quite a heavy diesel fleet. So already now we're looking at strategies for ventilation on demand so we can get the air in the right place but also optimise our power consumption. We've put a lot of effort as a company into getting the renewable energy project and we need to make sure that we're using that as best we can and that means optimising our power usage underground as well. It's important to look at what else is being done in industry and even though this is the first underground lithium mine in Australia, being able to implement other hard rock techniques has been our starting point and then looking to tailor it from what we've seen from the other areas of the business in open pit and then development um, mining as well. Continuous improvement needs to be the basis of how we operate as a team as well, being a high performing team in the underground space. So as soon as we have data, making sure we analyse that data, taking that to see how we can get better as a team. Having that focus on continuous improvement and saying, how's the burden and spacing working? Do we need to tighten up the, the uh, spacing at the toes to make sure our fragmentation is optimised as well going into uh, the crusher? There's obviously a cost optimisation piece to that as well. So how many holes we're putting into the ground and how much explosives we're using versus uh, the size of the rock we're getting and really optimising that as a business. So this is the surface raised bore rig that is drilling the five metre diameter uh, vent rise that's going to be used to exhaust all of the primary ventilation through the underground mine. So the primary ventilation will go through the portals and then be drawn to the northern extent of the ore body through this hole, um, which helps us with our strategy on being able to have multiple work areas going at one time. So Holly, tell me what we've got here, the paste plant. So it's the biggest paste plant in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, we've got dual systems set up so that we can pump paste to the Mount Man side and the Northwest side. On each side, we've got a primary and secondary borehole. Uh, so that allows us that if we do have a blockage in one of our boreholes, we're able to quickly switch to the other one, which will reduce any impacts on pouring paste underground. And you've got these automatic valves. Yes, so the automatic valve can swing from the main primary line to be able to then also dump paste on the surface in case we needed to clear something underground. But that's a primary piece of infrastructure to be able to give us that flexibility um, to operate on the line underground and then also clear the line on the surface. Our capital infrastructure setup is a point of difference at Kathleen Valley. Um, we've had laser focus on being able to set up multiple different stoping fronts on the same level. So by having a hanging wall drive and then multiple access points into the ore body, we can have remote boggers operating on the same level in different areas, which then increases our productivity. Talk me through where we're at now down here. Sure, so this is the 202 fill drive. So this is where the paste pipes head up towards the 2460 level. Uh, and behind us, we've got about 800 metres of paste pipe, which has come from the paste plant. So where are you taking us now? So I'm taking you to our first stope at the moment and we've just finished mining it and we're in the phase of preparing it to paste fill and this is going to be the first spot that we put paste fill underground. The thing that makes me excited and proud when you hear around industry, um, when people come to site and they say, oh, this is the cleanest underground mine that I've been to. And 
I, you know, that's just a credit to the people that are working here because that starts at the ground level all the way through Burn Cut leadership team and then through to the Liontown team as well. So we're walking into the, the drive where we've mined our first stope, which is a really exciting achievement for us as a team. Um, we're starting to gather data. We've started firing our second stope on the other level now. Um, so then we can continuously improve our fragmentation of the dirt. So we're using this as a commissioning stope, but the purpose of the paste is to make sure that we um, maintain structural integrity of the ground surrounding where we're creating these voids. So now we have to come in, build bulkheads on either side of the stope. We have to drill a fill hole and an easer hole. Um, easer hole being the breather hole, which allows uh, the paste to be able to go into the stove. What's it been like working with a team that are all combined together wanting success? I think it's important to stop and reflect on what we've achieved as a team and then be able to regroup, take learnings and drive forward. This is one of the fingers. Tell me about what happens in this part of the operation. Trucks will dump on these fingers as the fingers are built uh, out towards their extents. We, um, we then close the finger for dumping and, and open it for rec reclaim and then the ROM loaders start to, to feed it into the crusher in accordance with the, the blend plan and yeah, into the uh, processing plant it goes. The open pits were designed to not only access the, the top sections of the ore body uh, for early mill feed, they were also designed in such a way to generate enough waste to be able to build what we needed to build without generating surplus material. I think once underground mining fully ramps up, the majority of, of tailings will be um, used underground as backfill, fed to the paste plant, mixed with cement um, and then pumped underground. The beauty of that is then that you don't need as many uh, tailings dams on the surface or the tailings dams that you do have on the surface can be smaller. And then when the mine is finished and rehabbed and, and handed back, the long-term sort of impact or changes to that original surface is, is reduced. It is a beautiful country. Oh, I think when you, you're up high, um, as we are on the TSF, you can see the features of the land. You can see Jones Creek, you can see Mount Man and the various other rock forms and locations around here. Some mines you work at, it's all flat, no features, but here a different story. There's a lot of stuff going on and I think that Liontown has done a good job of, of weaving this in operation uh, in amongst it all. One of the things that Joao asked us to do when we um, um, sought their permission to come and mine on this land was to be respectful of Mount Man, to preserve it as much as possible. And if we were going to make waste dumps and we were going to make tail storage facilities, that we don't make them higher uh, than Mount Man. They didn't want our tailing dams to encroach upon, hide or obscure or surround what was, was a significant um, landmark in, in, in their country. We were told right at the start, no one can ever cut six portals in one go, you're mad. To stand here now and to see it, after all the work that the team's put in to get us this far, um, to actually be able to come in and see the ore, um, be in an ore drive, to be able to go up onto the ROM pad and see the material that we've, we've put there, um, it's, it's a great feeling, yeah. We've done it, like we're, we're underground, we're pulling ore out of the underground currently. We've delivered what we said we were going to do. We've done it. We've mined the first stope in underground lithium in Australia and reflecting on that, it's, um, it's a pretty incredible achievement and me being me then just goes, well, what's next? How are we going to get there? Because I'm ultra competitive on making sure we deliver on what we say we're going to do.